proud to stand here and introduce to you the man who Veterans for a Strong America endorses to become the next president, the next commander in chief. Please welcome me. Please help me welcome Mr. Donald J. Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donald Trump. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Boy, oh boy, I didn't expect that. You know, Joel and the group called and they said, would you come over and speak? I'm here for a certain reason. You know, it's called tomorrow night. So I got here and they asked a couple of days ago, would it be possible to come over and say a few words? An endorsement from your group with so many veterans, hundreds of thousands of veterans. I really appreciate that, Joe. I did not expect it. I didn't expect it. I didn't ask for it. I will say this. Uh, I am with the veterans 100 percent. They're our greatest people. They're being treated terribly. The, not only the number of deaths, which are obviously, that's tantamount, that's what, what's going on is incredible. But as of two weeks ago on Wednesday, the vets had the longest wait in the history of the Veterans Administration. You go in and see a doctor, you wait for days, for days, and it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. If I win, believe me, it's not going to happen. And one of the things I thought I'd do, and I'd stress so strongly, the veterans' hospitals, obviously, they have problems. They're not properly run. And when you have to wait long hours and long days, and then, in some cases, have the doctor say, I'm sorry, I'm going on vacation, believe me, it doesn't get much worse than that. So we're going to create a whole new system. We're going to take the system apart. And if they're not doing the job, the veterans are going to go to private doctors, private hospitals, public hospitals. And we're going to reimburse those doctors and those hospitals. And you're going to get the greatest service of any veterans in any country because you deserve it. And that's going to be... That's going to be broken down into something that's going to be very special. Right now, and you know it, we have illegal immigrants that are treated better by far than our veterans. That's not going to happen anymore. It's not going to happen. So, Joel, I just really appreciate it. So unexpected to be here is an honor. They don't build ships like this anymore, folks. You know, we don't do them this way anymore. I actually said, what about recommissioning? Look at this thing. The largest guns in the world, most powerful guns. I learned a lot about the Iowa. By the way, Iowa is a great place for a lot of reasons. You know, we have been treated so well in the state of Iowa. It's been incredible. Number one on the polls. And we uh, love those people. They're great. So this is a great ship. Paul guy, he goes, this is a great ship and that's a great state. I just want to say that we're going to come out with some plans in a very short time. We're going to be building up our military. We're going to make our military so big and so strong and so great. And it will be so powerful that I don't think we're ever going to have to use it. Nobody's going to mess with us. That I can tell you. And we're going to have a president who's respected by Putin, who's respected by Iran. You know, let's talk about for two seconds. Let's talk about the Iran deal. Now, Obama, Obama and his people call him the supreme leader of Iran. Obama talks about the supreme leader. Well, I'm not calling him a supreme leader, but he said the other day, that after this rip-off deal is completed, he will never touch, do business with the United States again. We're finished with the United States. They're taking $150 billion. They're getting a deal that's going to need, it's going to go right into nuclear weapons much sooner than you think. They're going to self-police. Think of that one. They are going to go and self-police. They got the 24, they have 24-day provisions and by the way, what people don't understand, the 24-day provision doesn't start. You know this, right? 
it doesn't start for a long time before you get to it. The clock is ticking. It could take forever. We may never get in there. It is one of the dumbest deals and one of the weakest contracts I've ever seen of any kind. So we are going to do things in this country right. We're not going to sign deals where we have four prisoners over there and they're still there and we don't even ask them. One of them's there because he's a Christian. We have a writer. We have the whole thing is absolutely insane. You know, they asked the president and they asked Secretary of State Curry, who maybe, you know, I've been saying Hillary Clinton is the worst Secretary of State in the history of this country, right? All right, I've been saying it. But it's possible the world blew up around her. It blew up, just blew up the whole world. It's like a different place. It's possible that because of this deal made by Secretary Kerry, who has absolutely no clue how to negotiate, it may be that he's going to supersede. And I understand that he may want to run for president. He has no chance like she has no chance. So we're going to see what happens. We have many problems in our country. One of them is immigration. Now, I took a tremendous hit when I brought up illegal immigration when I announced I was running for president. And for two weeks, I said, you know, Rush Limbaugh, who's a great guy, he said he has suffered more incoming, meaning the press, than anybody I've seen. So what happened is you have now found out what illegal immigration is all about. And I am so happy that I'm the one that brought it to the fore, because believe me, it's a big problem. It is a big problem. So you remember, for about two weeks, I said, boy, this is tougher than I thought running for president. And then you found out there's tremendous crime. There's tremendous drugs pouring across the border. Tremendous beyond going to Chicago, going to New York, going to L.A., going all over our country. So the drugs pour in and the money pours out. Not a good deal. We get the drugs. They get the money. The drug cartels are going wild. They cannot believe how stupid our government is. They are making a fortune. The drugs come in. The money goes out daily. And I saw it because I was on the border. I was there and we saw it and everybody sees it every day. And we have the kind of people that can do something about it. But we have no leadership. None. None whatsoever. So we're going to build a wall. And Mexico is going to pay for the wall. Believe me. You know, a lot of politicians have said, oh, they're not going to pay. He must be. They don't know anything about. They never read the art of the deal, first of all. So here's the story. So here's the story. I said the other day to one of my people, what is the United States trade deficit with Mexico, Japan and China? So let's start with China. Almost four hundred billion dollars a year. Now, if you have a company where you're losing $400 billion, you got to do something very fast. We don't. We've been losing hundreds of billions of dollars a year, frankly, for decades. Not going to happen anymore. Not going to happen anymore. With Japan, where their massive ships float right here and they drop off the cars, right? They drop off thousands and thousands and thousands of cars, millions of cars, and we sell them beef. We sell them beef and they don't want it because their farmers don't want our beef. They protest and they send it back. All right. It's not going to happen that way anymore. Now, with Mexico and I love Mexico, I have many, many people, many, many people from Mexico that work with me and they work for me and they buy my apartments. Same with China. I have so many people. They pay me millions and millions. What am I supposed to hate China because they gave me millions of dollars to buy an apartment? I don't think so. I have the largest bank in the world as a tenant. It's from China, bigger than any bank in this country by many times. They're from China. The problem we have is that the leaders of Mexico, Japan, China and every other country that we do business with, they're smarter, more cunning, sharper than our leaders. I love free trade. The concept is great, but you need smart people. I have the smartest people in this country lined up. I know the smartest. 
I have Carl Icahn. I have the best business leaders and they all want to do it. They're wealthy because they make good deals like me. I make good deals. You know, it's a talent. It's a talent. You can't be a politician. Look, I'm, I'm fighting some very nice people. Very nice, even though I'm leading in the polls. But they're very nice people. But they're never going to do anything with these countries. They're never going to be able to do it. It's an instinct. It's something that's special. They don't have it. Believe me, they don't have it. It's just going to be more of the same. So we're going to make our country so great. We are going to make it strong. We are going to make it powerful. We're going to rebuild the military. We're going to make it so strong. We are going to take care of our veterans. And in the end, in the end, I want you people to look around and look at each other because this is going to be a special day. The other week, Two weeks ago in Mobile, Alabama, 31,000 people showed up in a rainy, rough day. 31,000 people came to see us speak. And we're talking about making America great again. Last night in Dallas at the American Airlines Center, 20,000 people, the basketball arena of the Mavericks. 20,000 people showed up. And I want to tell you, it was a love fest. Everybody, there wasn't, think of it, 20,000 people. There wasn't one heckler in the whole room. I kept saying, there's got to be one. There was a word, two words that used to be used a lot called silent majority. They stopped using them. The silent majority, believe me, is back. And I think, and I think we can use it somewhat differently. I don't think we have to call it a silent majority anymore. Because they're not silent. People are not silent. They're disgusted with our incompetent politicians. They're disgusted with the people that are giving our country away. They're disgusted when they tell the Border Patrol agents who are good people and can do the job. They're disgusted when they're allowed to people just walk right in front of them and they're standing there helpless and people just pour into the country. They're disgusted when a woman who's nine months pregnant walks across the border, has a baby, and you have to take care of that baby for the next 85 years. They're disgusted by what's happening to our country. And you're going to look around. You're going to remember who the people are that are here because we're doing something special. This is a movement. We're going to make our country great again. Believe me, we will make our country great again. I love you all. Thank you very much. I love you. Thank you. the hottest thing out there. This hat, you can't get them. Thank you, everybody. We love you. Thank you very much.